September of the U.S. Olympic boxing team. His first fight of these games is tonight. De La Hoya has come to Barcelona with promises to keep. It won't be easy, because for Oscar De La Hoya, it has never been easy. Bob Costas has his story. The first day, I loved it. I liked going inside the ring and getting the feel of the gloves. It was exciting for me. I had a lot of energy in me. And, you know, wanted to just let it all out, and the gym was the place to do it. From the moment Oscar De La Hoya knocked out his first opponent at age six, his life began to change. He traded the tough streets of East L.A. for the local gym, traded a chance to wear a gang member's jacket for a pair of eight-ounce gloves. But as different as the world has become to Oscar, it's important to him that his address remain the same. I grew up here in East Los Angeles, and if I win the gold medal, if I become rich or whatever, I must keep on living here because, uh, I mean, this is my neighborhood. Here, people know me, and I know the people. They want to see somebody um, come out of the neighborhood and do well. A converted southpaw, Oscar's jabs and body punches carry an unexpected kick that have won him two national championships. It's something opponents usually learn the hard way. I want to be the boxer that, that nobody ever, ever saw before, a boxer who who uh, is going to be different from everybody else. Instinct and skill come in part from his father and grandfather who were boxers before him. But for Oscar, the elusive quality called heart that all fighters covet but few possess is located in the stands. That's where his mother, Cecilia, used to sit, through every black eye and every bloody nose. Three years ago, Oscar learned that she had breast cancer. She, she passed away, you know, and... Uh, she was there all the time to to encourage me and uh she would always uh be my cheering section there and uh she she told me you know she wants a gold medal so so i guess i'm gonna get it for her if that's what she wants i'm gonna do it if intensity wins gold medals then oscar de la hoya is a dead solid lock while his quiet manner and shy smile don't reveal it there is a pressure building in the face of so much neighborhood support, so many expectations for him to win. When I train, I have to just look perfect. Every punch I throw, I have to connect and, you know, move good because people come and look at me and, and they want to see the best from me. And uh, the pressure is there. Ironically, his mother's dream of a gold medal for him might be the heaviest burden for Oscar, yet he knows if he's successful, it will also be his greatest reward. She's always going to be there for me. So, I mean, it's going to feel like, like I got this extra power, this extra strength. And uh, I mean, it's going to feel great. And she's going to look out for me and I'm going to win. You saw all those in his neighborhood who were cheering on Oscar de la Hoya. And East Los Angeles produced another fine Olympic boxer, Paul Gonzalez. Back in 1984, was awarded the Val Barker Cup as the finest boxer in the Los Angeles Games. Indeed, and now out of that same set of origins comes Oscar De La Hoya with enormous expectations, enormous self-imposed and media-imposed expectations for Oscar, trying to fulfill the public promise he made to his late mother. Bob Trumpy and Al Bernstein with Oscar De La Hoya's opening bout in Barcelona. One of the things not mentioned in the feature, what a gentleman Oscar De La Hoya is. He is a boxer after being a gentleman. He is the 1991 U.S. Amateur Boxer of the Year. And this is a rare treat for a lot of the De La Hoya family. His father, Joel, here in attendance in Barcelona. As he, he's accompanied in the ring by head coach Joe Bird. His grandfather, Vicente, from Mexico, made the trip to Los Angeles to watch his grandson compete in his first Olympic battle. There's... Dad Joel, he too was a boxer. Oscar, the third generation of the De La Hoya family. He represents the United States at 132 pounds. He is an artist, likes to sketch, would like to someday, after a pro career that parallels his hero, Alexis Arguella, he would like to become, if he can, an architect. His opponent, Adelson Silva, out of Brazil. Silva is 24 years old, 5 feet 8 inches tall, born and raised in Mina 
Jonas Geras Brazil. The referee for the match, Rizard Redu. Oscar has waited a long time to fight, Al. This is the moment he has been waiting for, and uh, he comes into this uh, Olympic tournament, Bob, in a kind of a strange position, even though he's only, uh, his only loss in recent time was to Marco Rudolph uh, in the World Championships. Not everyone across the United States is picking him unanimously to win a gold medal, and that you would not have expected. You know, I think he kind of answered that question to us the other day, Al. He said, for this electronic scoring system, I've sacrificed some power for punches. I, I think it's in part intentional on Oscar's part. I think it is, and also he made a, a big point of telling us that, he said, I have coasted. Oh, oh my! Uppercut, left, uppercut. There was power there, wasn't there? Of course, you heard in the piece that uh, Oscar De La Hoya, former left-hander, converted to the conventional style, so he does have power in both hands, and he certainly displayed it there to Mr. Silva. Now, in amateur boxing, though, that knockdown, whoa, he staggered. Silva just staggered Oscar De La Hoya. Good left hook, and you know, I was starting to say De La Hoya told us, I'm going to let it all hang out in the Olympics. I haven't in recent bouts. Well, it benefited him, but then it hurt him, didn't it, after he got hit with that left hook? is a much more aggressive De La Hoya than we have seen before than we saw in either the box office or the trial. You get no additional points for knocking an opponent down in amateur boxing. This is electronic scoring. Uh, that knockdown counts no more than a jab thrown by Oscar De La Hoya. Unless, of course, you can string three of them together yes. in one round. <laughs> then you're in business. You are definitely in business. That's an automatic knockout. The referees in amateur boxing are instructed by amateur boxing federations throughout the world to protect the fighter at all cost. One of the things you see from De La Hoya, part of what you talked about, he was much more of a combination puncher in the past. Now he is looking to land specific shots, as are most of the boxers, due to the electronic scoring system, which you are seeing the official scoring as it happens. It's majority rules good system. Five judges at ringside, three or three, within a second's time, push a button and uh, the fighter is awarded a point as Oscar De La Hoya was for that left hook he just landed. He is able to hurt Silva with that left hand, both with the uppercut as you see it there and the left hook. This is a different De La Hoya. He, he said he was going to do this, Bob, and he's true to his word. I'm going out. He said, I need to score knockouts in the Olympics. And he said, I want to show people I'm back to where I was when they thought I was a devastating puncher a couple years ago. Now, this is the way he fought prior to the 1991 championships down in Sydney, Australia. He lost to a young uh, man named uh, Marco Rudolph. It was his first loss in four years. You see Silva's nose is bleeding. Oscar early in command in this first round. Crowd of the U.S. contingent here. This Oscar's best friend, Raul Marquez. Raul Marquez is dead. More hooks thrown by Oscar De La Hoya. That's a caution to De La Hoya for pushing by Mr. Redu of Poland. Round one in. Even with his left hook, but the uppercut was an excellent shot on the inside, set Silva down. But he is not giving up on the combinations, as you see here. He will go after Silva with jabs and straight right hands like that one. All right, round two begins. A nice beginning for the 1992 Olympics for Oscar De La Hoya. Our Beasley Reese was in the corner. He heard uh, Joe Bird's instructions to Oscar. Beasley, what did he advise him on? Well, basically, he, he told him not to rush. Don't rush in. He said, let the fight come to him now. He let him know that he had a, had a commanding lead, and he said that everything would come. Don't rush into anything stupid. Oscar De La Hoya in red. Silva in blue. Silva from Brazil. Oscar, of course, from East Los Angeles. And his grandfather, Vicente, sitting there watching on television, his grandson fight in the Olympics. It's really special. You know, these, these stories with these kids are not made up. They're real. They have this, you know, there's so much closeness among the, the families of these boxers. Another good right hand by Silva. He, yeah. is, he is not awed nope. by this, Bob. He's still throwing hard shots. Now Oscar's nose is bleeding. He also has a little mouse underneath his uh, left eye there. Well, and this different style, the fact that he's going after it, has caused him to get hit more than we've seen Oscar hit recently. Though he's still got the lead, of course. 
And there's that uppercut which he can get in uh, on a regular basis. Oscar does plan on turning pro after uh, oh, that mouse underneath his eye now is, is now bleeding. And you're always in danger in amateur boxing when the referee can determine that the injury is too bad for him to continue. And unlike the professional ranks where if you see a, a cut or bleeding under the eye, you don't think it's going to stop the box. It can, as you point out, in amateur boxing. You know Oscar De La Hoya right now wants to get him out of there and not risk any further damage to the eye because, after all, he's got a lot more boxing to do here. Yeah, you, uh, these fighters must go through five fights to make it to the gold medal round. So when you have an injury like this in your first fight, with 1.22 to go in the second round, it can be dangerous even though he leads. The referee can stop the fight for medical reasons at any moment. Excellent body shot by De La Hoya. But they don't score, Al. That's one of the failures of the scoring system. Body shots have not been counted that often unless you're from Cuba. Felix Savone seems to get those points. No one else does. Well, Marquez got one that was very important to him, but other than that, Sergio Reyes got few. Now, De La Hoya is using his jab effectively here, but what he really wants to do is land that left uppercut again or a good straight right hand and get Silva out of there without any more damage to the eye. You can see the mouse underneath it. It was bleeding profusely earlier. He wiped the blood off with his own glove. It's not uh, affected his vision yet. It doesn't appear. And it is in a spot where, as I say, normally you wouldn't think it would be a huge problem, but in amateurs it's different. And, you know, the, um, the thing is that it's obscuring what is a tremendous performance at this point by Oscar De La Hoya. He's done everything he wanted to do with the exception of getting hit with the one shot that cut him, which, uh, you know, is a fluke. Yeah, this young man is just 19 years old. Of course, we know the ability of Joe Bird in the corner to take care of welts around the eye. He certainly fixed Pepe Riley. I have a feeling once Joe looks at it after this second round, there'll be a thumb in that spot. Oscar will be good for round three. Well, you saw the attention paid to the eye by Joe Bird. He was uh, trying to close the... It's not really a cut. It's a bruise that's, that's kind of exploded at the end. It didn't appear to be a very serious injury, Al. You know, it didn't swell as much as you would have thought it might. Uh, Beasley Reese overheard the instructions uh, by the corner to Oscar. What did they say, Beasley? You know, that time they didn't really talk about boxing. What they talked about was protecting that eye. He was told to keep his hand up by the cut. He was told that it's only just to scrape and not to worry about it. All right. Good advice. Oscar De La Hoya with a clear and commanding lead. He is opening fight here in the 1992 Olympic Boxing Tournament. That's a slip by Silva. Referee Ray Du will have him rub his gloves. They'll begin, of course, when the referee says stop in amateur boxing, everything stops. The fighters and the clock. Yep. Well, the, the referee is now going to have the doctor look at uh, Oscar De La Hoya's eye. There is not that much swelling there. There's a little swelling, but it's not, it really isn't that huge. Okay, the doctor says fight on. I think Oscar has survived the toughest part of this fight. Yeah, you mentioned Marco Rudolph from Germany. He is in the other part of the draw. He had a very tough time beating uh, Vasile Nisser of uh, Romania uh, in the first round of the tournament earlier today. So he did not look impressive in his first match as De La Hoya has here. They would not meet if he was going to meet Rudolph. He would not meet him until the gold medal match. And I think that's exactly the match that Oscar De La Hoya wants. The U.S. boxing team while here in Barcelona, when uh, they first got here, they were making a trip. And Oscar jumps all over Silva now. Silva looked like he was hurt slightly. He's more, boy, he's hurt more than slightly. I'm surprised there wasn't even a standing eight count in that instance. Nose bleeding again to continue the story about the U.S. boxing team's training. It was so difficult for them to get in and out of security as De La Hoya now has Silva on the ropes. The U.S. boxing team is just working out at the Olympic Village underneath the palm tree. <laughs> De La Hoya piling up the points. It has been a dominating performance for De La Hoya, and ho hopefully from his standpoint anyway, the, uh, the swelling in his eye won't be so bad that it will impact future bouts. 
And now he's at a point in the bout here where he can use his jab and his movement and his boxing skills to protect the eye and stay out of further trouble. And with the huge lead he has, and as we point out, that's the official scoring, um, he should be in pretty good shape here unless he gets rocked or something. Yeah, Al, the only problem, uh, Pepe Riley had five days, six days actually, after his eye uh, injury to heal Oscar has just two days. If he wins this fight, he'll fight again on Saturday. So there's going to be some intense ice treatment on Oscar's left eye in preparation for that fight on Saturday. And maybe the best news is that the man he will face, Moses Odian of Nigeria, is a man, is a left-hander who does not have much power and more than likely, Oscar De La Hoya could knock him out early. That's what he'd need to do. Well, final seconds of this fight. Standing eight count by the referee for Mr. Silva. Mr. Silva's second standing eight count of the day, and now his eye is also cut, and he, the referee, stops the contest. Oscar De La Hoya in his opening fight in the 92 Olympics. Al, to this point, has made his point. A different Oscar De La Hoya in every respect, even, unfortunately, the picture you see there. This is a gritty Oscar De La Hoya, not the man that boxed his way to victory in the box office and the trials and other competitions. He said, I'm going to let it all hang out, and his dad saw him do that here. So Oscar De La Hoya wins his Olympic debut. De La Hoya moves on, as do we. And... I've dedicated that gold medal for her. She, that's what, uh, that's what she wanted. So that's what I'm gonna get. It. Come 90, 1992 in Barcelona, Spain. Come on, mijo. He continues to be a good bet to win gold here in Barcelona, but he comes here without his most ardent supporter, Mom Cecilia, who died two years ago from cancer at age 38. It was a time when Oscar's Olympic dream was just beginning, before the 1990 Goodwill Games in Seattle. I told, uh, I told my wife, you want to go to uh, Washington to, to see Oscar Bax? She said, yes. This is the last thing, um, the last time I want to see Oscar fight. It's going to be really difficult for me if I do get that Olympic gold medal because I'm gonna start thinking about her being next to me and how she's gonna hug me and how she's gonna start crying and how she's gonna jump in the ring when they're awarding me the gold medal and it's it's very hard every time I win it's hard, so hard for myself because the last fight that she was in she was at the Goodwill Games in Seattle Washington and she was cheering on up in the up in the sections in the seats up there and when they were playing the national anthem I could just see her waving two flags a Mexican and American flag and tears came down my eyes and she was all happy and everything and I always think about that when I, um, when I win Fate is sometimes cruel it would be Cecilia's last chance to see Oscar win gold the road to Barcelona for the De La Hoya family has been partly a grieving process. Today, Oscar does road work near his mother's grave in East L.A., while Joel has become mother and father to Oscar, his brother and sister. My little girl, and she says, Papi, I miss my mother. So I, I say, me, me too, mija. To make Cecilia's dream come true, Oscar, Joel, and Uncle Vicente help out family trainer Roberto in the gym, while the rest of the family offer support from their adjacent homes, just a few miles from Cecilia's grave. If you ask her, we need a medal. I see Cecilia right there crying with us. That's what I'm waiting for, for the Olympics to come up and hopefully win that gold medal. And just tell her, here it is. Here's your gold medal that you wanted, that, that I promised you. In the corner with Joe Bird, you can see one.